The Atari Jaguar was one of the best consoles from the early 1990s never to make it as a commercial success. Up until now, playing its games using emulation has been, well, patchy. But that's all changed with the latest version of Big PEMU. So, let's finally have a go at some Atari Jaguar gameplay. Hi and welcome to Bytes and Bits. The Atari Jaguar was the final console released by the iconic Atari Corporation. Arriving in 1993, it was pitted against the 16-bit Sega Genesis and Nintendo Super NES, along with the recently released 32-bit Panasonic 3DO. Now, Atari marketed it as the first 64-bit console, and indeed, it based a lot of its advertising along this sales line, again implying that the new console was much more powerful than any of the existing competition, simply because it had more bits. So whilst it was for the time a very powerful machine, it was actually based around three 32-bit processors. The main processor was a standard Motorola 68000, and that was used mainly to manage the machine. It then had two custom chips, a graphics processor chip called the Tom chip, and a custom digital signal processor called the Jerry chip. Now the Tom chip did actually contain some 64-bit data channels, um, but none of the processors were truly what you would call 64-bit. Now having said all of that, the console did allow developers to create some amazing games. If the software engineers could get their heads around how to utilise the power of the two custom chips, um, the Atari Jaguar was actually capable of some groundbreaking graphics and audio performance. The problem was, of course, that there was a very steep learning curve to harness the power of these two new chips. And the whole process um, effectively involved coding your game for three separate systems, all housed within this one console. Atari were also notoriously bad at providing documentation and developer support, so the whole process of learning these chips was made even more difficult. Because of this, a lot of early game releases didn't really make use of the full power of the Atari Jaguar, and this in turn made the new console less appealing to buyers, so sales figures were never as good as Atari wanted. This then made the console less attractive for software developers, so that the Jaguar never really made a big, big impact into the console market. With the Sega Saturn and Sony PlayStation reaching the public in 1995, only two years after the Jaguar's release, along with Atari's deteriorating financial situation, the Jaguar's development effectively ceased, with Atari only managing to sell around 125,000 consoles. If you compare this with the Super NES sales of 43 million, it really puts the failure into perspective. As for emulation then, up until now, um, well, Atari Jaguar emulation has really been a bit hit and miss. Not all of the games worked, and emulation speed and accuracy has never been great. But um, a developer called Rich Whitehouse has just released the latest version of his big PEMU emulator, which is the first to provide full support for the entire Atari Jaguar game catalogue. So let's get this installed and have a look at how well it performs. Installing Big PEMU is incredibly simple. Um, just head over to the website, and again I'll put links to that in the description down below, and download the zip archive file. All you need to do is to extract this into a suitable folder, and you're ready to go. It, it really is that simple. All you need now are some game ROMs. As usual, due to YouTube policy, I'm not able to tell you exactly where to get these ROMs, um, but obviously Google is going to be a big help here. Now, MU Paradise um, did have a full set of game ROMs available for download, um, if only there was a way of turning those downloads back on again. Now, if, like me, you use a gaming front end such as Launchbox, you can easily integrate this into your setup. 
So the emulator executable um, takes the game ROM file name as a command line parameter. So in LaunchBox, you simply need to go into the Manage Emulator section. If you then add a new emulator, fill in the details and specify where you've saved the executable file. By default, the full game ROM file name will be passed as a parameter in the command line. So finally, we need to tell LaunchBox to use Big P EMU as the default emulator for the Atari Jaguar system. If you've already got your Atari Jaguar files imported, it will go through and update them all to use the new emulator. Otherwise, just go through the process of importing your games and your Atari Jaguar emulation system will be ready to go. If you run the emulator exe file directly, or if you press escape whilst running a game, you'll get to the main menu system. Now there are a whole range of settings you can play about with within the emulator. The video and audio settings give you full control over how the game looks and sounds. And the developer has added a whole range of effects you can use to recreate the original look and feel of the console. So please do have a play around with these to get it just the way you want. But the only real settings you have to play with are the input mappings. So if we go to the input settings section, we can select the input device one option. Now leaving the device type as standard for my Xbox controller, I can then go and set the bindings. By default, the controller buttons are mapped to keyboard keys, which you can go through and add mappings for all of your gamepad buttons. Now, if you look on the right hand side of the screen, you'll see where the buttons are actually located on the real Atari Jaguar uh, game controller. So the top half are fairly standard movement and fire buttons, but there's also a 12 key keypad in the bottom half of the controller. Now, by default, these are mapped to the number keys on your keypad together with O and P for the asterisk and hash symbol respectively. Now, the easiest way to um, complete the mapping is to use the Select All option, which will then take you through each controller input in order. You just simply have to press the input you want to match to that particular Jaguar input. Now, at the bottom of the list of inputs, you'll also find some analog controls, uh, and you do need to set these up individually, um, but I, I don't actually think they are necessary to be able to play the games, so, so I, I, I tend not to have them set up. So we should have everything ready now to get into some Atari Jaguar gameplay. Now, the Atari Jaguar only ever had about 50 games officially released, but within this very small catalogue, there are some real gems. Cybermorph was the game originally packaged with the console. It's a, a 3D third-person flying game, which, which does actually show off some of the capabilities of the machine. It might not be a fantastic game to play, but if you consider that this was released in 1993, well it does show the potential the Atari Jaguar had. Now, one of the first standout titles for the system was Tempest 2000, again released about um, six to eight months after the console hit the market. And, and this is a great update to the original vector graphics-based Tempest arcade game. Now, the Jaguar version made full use of the machine's graphic capabilities with fantastic gameplay and a fantastic soundtrack, so definitely one for you to have a go at. Now, as with almost every computer and platform and console at the time, Doom made an appearance on the Atari Jaguar. Now, for me, this is one of the best console ports, providing smooth, fast graphics performance whilst maintaining all of the atmosphere and excitement of the PC original. So if you've ever played any of the NES ones and so on, um, this will be a big improvement. Sticking with the 3D shooter style game, we've then got Alien vs Predator. Now, now, gameplay is very similar to Doom, but this variation has a really sinister feel to the gameplay. The murky shadows and confined corridors, teamed with the potential of finding an acid-filled monster around each corner, does keep your nerves on end as you're playing. 
You also have the ability to play as three separate characters, a human, an alien, or even as a predator. And this is a great title to play in a dark room by yourself. Now, 3D was definitely the in thing during the 1990s, but this doesn't mean that the Atari Jaguar didn't have some great platform and shoot 'em up games. Rayman is a great example of how the graphic power of the console could be used to create a fantastically rich and beautiful side scrolling platformer. With large 3D animated sprites and scenery filling the screen, teamed with some great gameplay, this makes this title, in, in my opinion at least, one of the best games on the system. So do make sure you give it a go. So those are a few of my favourites, but do make sure you have a look through the rest of the catalogue where you'll find a number of other gems, including Wolfenstein 3D and a great 3D version of Missile Command. So that about wraps it up for the Atari Jaguar. Big thanks to Rich Whitehouse for putting in the effort to create this fantastic piece of software that really lets us finally experience the full power of this very underrated console. It's just a shame that this is practically the last thing that the famous Atari Corporation ever did. So I hope you've enjoyed this video. Do please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel to make sure I can continue producing these videos. Do have a go at playing these fantastic Atari Jaguar games, and I look forward to seeing you again in the next episode. Have fun, and bye for now. For more games programming, electronics projects, and retro gaming, please make sure you like this video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and visit my website.